Hello everyone, today for my first video, we'll be covering the purification of toluene, following the procedure done by Doug's Labs on YouTube. Toluene is commonly used in many laboratories as an organic solvent due to its lack of polarity, or as a reagent. Toluene needs to be purified because it contains an impurity called methylthiophene, as seen here. Methylthiophene and toluene are both aromatic compounds. But when toluene undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, if methylthiophene is present, it can polymerize and cause your end product that you're trying to get to become contaminated. So, we hope to remove methylthiophene. Now, you can't do it by distillation because of the similarity in these two's boiling points. So, you have to do it by a sulfonation. And since this sulfur compound activates this ring, and there is no highly activating group on this toluene, methylthiophene will be sulfonated first. So, to do this, we add a 10% by volume solution of cooled 93% sulfuric acid. So let's say we have 150 milliliters of toluene that we want to purify. That means we have to use 15 milliliters of 93% cooled sulfuric acid. It has to be cooled or it might cause the toluene to boil and release toluene vapors into the room, which would uh, not be good. So, we add that solution to the mixture and it will sulfonate the methylthiophene, which at first doesn't seem like much. And the methylthiophene will go here because this spot is the most activated. <clears throat> but then if we use a strong base, like sodium bicarbonate, that will force this into the water layer, since toluene is insoluble in water, and allow for an easy extraction. So, it'll end up looking like this. And then if we draw that, let's say like a, a beaker, uh, it's a terrible beaker, but uh, that's okay. So that's it with before we add the sodium bicarbonate solution. And then sodium bicarbonate solution goes in there. And then we got a nice layered out with toluene on top and H2O plus the acid, well, the neutralized acid on top. And then it can just be decanted into another beaker and your pure toluene will be, actually, forgive me, it should be the toluene should be on top and the water and the ashes should be on the bottom because toluene is less dense. Okay, so now the only thing that's left is to go to the lab and to do it. Hello everybody. Now that we're in the lab, it's time to purify the impure toluene. So to do this, all we need is 150 milliliters of the impure toluene, some cooled sulfuric acid, 93%, 15 milliliters of it actually, and we're going to need pH up which is sodium bicarbonate, I mean, sodium carbonate, which you can just get in a pool store, or if you look up soda ash online, it's pretty, pretty easy to get. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this on the hot plate, and we're gonna put in a stir bar, and with some strong stirring, we are going to start adding this cooled sulfuric acid solution, which I just put in some ice to cool it down. I'm just gonna get this water off so none drips in. 
as there's some water on the lip. Okay, now I'm going to add it in portions as we don't want it to heat up too much. That's the reason we pulled it. As you can see, on addition of the sulfuric acid, it starts to become cloudy and a yellow, and a yellow um, layer forms at the bottom. This is the sulfuric acid um, that is reacting with the methyl thiophene and pulling out the impurity into the sulfuric acid, causing it to become yellow and also impure. So now we're going to let this we're going to let this stir for uh, about ten minutes, and then we will come back and decant the upper toluene layer. Before we go, I figured I'll just show you. As you can see, there is the sulfuric acid. As you can see, it is currently reacting with the methyl thiophene and pulling it out of the toluene, which is that cloudy upper layer. So yeah, that's what's happening right now. So give it 10 minutes and I'll be back. I forgot to mention, while this is stirring, um, you can make your sodium carbonate solution, uh, which I'm going to do now by adding the sodium carbonate, also known as pH up, into this. And this is going to generate some heat, so you're going to have to let it cool down. So that's why I suggested doing that during the mixing process. Get out of there, bug. It's because we don't want to add it while there is heat. So now I'm just going to mix this, as you can see. Uh, I got to mix it up because it's, it's not all dissolved in there. Let's see, let me get a better angle. And I'm going to mix it up. It's going to cause some localized heating. And then I'm going to let it cool down. And then I will... I will use this to neutralize any remaining acids in the toluene. Okay, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so... Now that it's uh, stirred for 10 minutes, um, I've let it rest for a little bit. And as you can see... There is a, a nice yellowish, tarry sulfuric acid layer at the bottom, and this cloudy toluene layer at the top. Now, if we were to just use the normal industrial toluene in the sulfonation reaction, the this would have happened. This would have all tarred out, and it would have gotten all cloudy and stuff, and that would have been gross. So, now... It's time to decant the upper layer into this beaker here and avoid getting any of the sulfuric acid into our, our beaker. So let's do that. And it's okay if you gotta leave a little toluene behind. You know, it happens. This, we're using excess toluene in this too, so according to the according to the procedure we're following, following, so it's okay to leave a little bit. We're trying to no, so we're gonna leave about that much left, and this is can be neutralized later. So I'm gonna put it on the side, and now we will add the sodium bicarbonate, I mean sodium carbonate, to this beaker to cause the separation of the toluene and any acids into a water layer and a toluene layer. And then we will decant that upper layer into a storage container. All right, I don't have a stir bar, so I'm gonna go get one and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with the stir bar. Put it in. Now with some stirring, we can add the sodium bicarbonate solution and we will test it every so often to check to see if it's basic. I have to use these pool pH test strips because 
my other test strips, my actual pH test strips, got blown away and they fell in between the cracks of my deck. So I'm never getting those back. We can also, you could also probably just do like a rough titration once it like stops bubbling. So that's probably an option too. Now, let's see the pH of this solution. I believe pH is the third one from the bottom. So we're still a little, so if we look here, we're still a little acidic. So it could use a little, a little more little more solution. We'll just do the whole thing. And we'll do one more test strip to see. Ah, there we go. Now we're looking at the third one from the top. You see, I mean, third one from the bottom. See how I turned blue? The same color as my glove. It's not, that's not even on that's not even on this scale, <laughs> this scale right here, the one with my thumbs on. So it's most definitely basic now. So we're good. So now we just let it stir for a little bit. We're gonna let it mix. And then I will decant this upper layer, which is the toluene into a storage container. And the rest can just be poured down the drain with, um, with water, obviously, with um, actual water from the faucet. And um, then it'll be good. Okay, so now that I've let this solution rest for a little bit, you can see the separation, the upper organic layer and the lower aqueous layer. This toluene is not uh, miscible or soluble in water and it has a lower density, so it floats on top. So now we're just going to decant this upper layer into these two um, storage containers. One already has some pure toluene in it that I purified the other day when I attempted to make this video and then a tropical storm ruined it. So we're going to decant it now. Again, we can, if we can, we'll avoid pouring in the lower aqueous layer. So it's good on that container. I was looking at this for a second, I thought that was water, but it's just the the glass curved like that. I was like, strange. So now, try and get this last little bit. It's really difficult the last little bit though, because sometimes the water just creeps in, you know? You could probably pipette the, the last portion off. That might be, in, or you could maybe put in a graduated cylinder. That might be um, easier, but I am lazy and I don't feel like doing that. So we're gonna do it like this. And then let it settle and re-pour it. And plus, I don't have a pipette, and my graduated cylinder is dirty. So, that's the best it's going to get. <laughs> All right. So, there we go. We got a container. Well, this is half full, so it's probably, a, it would be a half full container of toluene. So, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions on um, how I can improve my content this is my first video um please let me know in the comments and if you have any ideas on what i could do next besides what i'm going to do with this toluene i'm going to sulfonate it and make a paratoluene sulfonic acid then um 
please do let me know. And the link to this, where I got this from, will be in the description. So yeah, have a, have a good one, guys.